What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report, as well as Joe Boo's day job that sometimes ends up being on the weekends. Um, thought I was going to be home working in the workshop, but we're actually doing some work here in a church. I have two-inch conduit that we run up in here that's got to be run in here, okay, in here that's carrying on over carrying it through the ceiling here we've gone out get some more pieces for it it's got to come from up there you see where we got that far put a 45 on there carry it through up here connect with this one and then we're going to mount this box for lighting here with this uh electrical work and then we got to pull not one, not two, not three, but four, three-odd wires. You're looking at about $1,700 worth of electrical wire right there on the floor. So that's what I got to do here this Saturday before I can get back to the man cave and do some work. Um, having some thoughts here while I have some time. And I'm thinking about Micah Parsons, okay? Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons, who his rookie year played about 358 snaps at defensive end. Last year, Snap had about 750 snaps at defensive end. And looks like he's going to be turning into a full-time defensive end. Is talking about putting on more weight and more bulk. So here's the question, okay? Currently, he's 245 pounds. Or at least that's what he was when he ended the season last year, right? I'm going to put you right there. 245 pounds. The question is, how much weight should he put on? Now, part of the thing with Micah Parsons is his speed is critical. He is able to literally fake people out. Of course, the more weight you put on, the slower you will get. So it's a balance of having that extra bulk to be able to take those hits without suffer, without sacrificing the speed. So here's the question. Now, you think about Micah Parsons is six foot three. 245 pounds. If we take some great Dallas Cowboys outside linebackers, defensive end, we can look at, say, Charles Haley. Charles Haley was six foot five. Different era. Guys weren't quite as big as they are, say, now. Six foot five, 255. And that was Charles' playing weight. Charles was a little bit on the lighter side if you were looking at a comparable right now. Okay? So, couple things you want to keep in mind here. Because Charles Haley was 6'5", spread out 255, really, that's more of the same size of build that Micah Parsons really is at 245. You follow me? The two inches of space is the 10 pounds of difference. You know, you're stretched out a little bit more. Charles was always tall and very, very elongated. Charles, of course, took a lot of pounding and a lot of abuse, and unfortunately, ended up having back issues. Let's think about DeMarcus Ware. DeMarcus Ware, of course, more of a contemporary, you know, recently, you know, just retired a few years back. DeMarcus Ware, six foot four, 258 pounds. So when you look at the comparable of him being three pounds heavier than Charles Haley and one inch shorter, he's still a little bit more stocky. It's not much, but he's still a little bit more stocky. And you look at that and say, 258, one more inch, you're talking about 13 pounds. So he, DeMarcus Ware, is a little stockier right now than what uh, Micah Parsons is. So when you start thinking about this, we're talking about bulking up. Ideally, I don't think that you want to get Micah Parsons because he is a shorter frame. I think actually the 255, if he puts on 10 pounds of muscle and strength, I don't think it's going to negate much of his, um, his speed. I think if you start then looking and saying, well, maybe you should get to 260. At 260, I think it's going to actually start impacting the speed that he has. Maybe that's, you know, not too much of a push. Um, he does have more speed than pretty much anybody else out there at defensive end. Um, but we'll have to wait and see how much he puts on. And the thing is, is it's not like, you know, when I went to Kansas City here and David Wiley is just stuffing ribs and chicken wings and everything else and we're going to slaps and eating barbecue. 
and I went from 258 to came back at like 265. Now, fortunate for me, I'm back down to 259, okay? So that five pounds, I could feel it this past week. Trust me, I could feel it. We're not talking about putting on five pounds of fat. We're talking about putting on five pounds of muscle and strength. 260, I think, would be pushing it um, for him, but 255 might be the ideal weight that he has. Now, again, he is tenacious, he is strong, he is fast, and these are all things and attributes that make him the player that he is. I personally can't wait to see year number three. The first year is, you know, you get this, your eyes are wide open because you're literally doing everything you can to get ready for the draft in, in, in the NFL. And of course, now you've got, you've gone from being a big fish in a little pond to now just being another fish in the ocean with everybody else. And so typically that rookie year is hard. That second year usually is a chance for you to kind of take a step back. And he really didn't take a step back. He still ended up with the 12 sacks this past year. But you could see as the season wore on with him playing as much as he did on the line that he could get, he was getting a little bit nicked up in things. And this is where the Cowboys have said, okay, you put on that weight. We're going to meet you halfway there because we're going to put in some more weight on that defensive line. Because the thing about right now, when you looked at it, we had good pass rushers across the board. You know, we had um, Dorrance Armstrong, you know, nine sacks. That was great. Dante Fowler and things. Those guys fed, fed, feasted because of them paying attention to Micah Parsons. If Hankins and if um, Mozzie Smith can end up getting that push in the middle where they're going to deem, you know, that double team because those guys are going to be strong enough and quick enough to be able to make a difference against that center of that guard, then that means it's less abuse that's going to happen to Micah Parsons, in which case then he's going to thrive. He's not going to be getting hit by those double teams and those combo blocks. Instead of the running back coming over to help out, that running back is going to have to cover the middle because those guys are putting pressure in the face of the quarterback. So all of these things are all going to be factors in what happens with Micah Parsons. It will be great for him to put on that extra bulk as long as he does not lose the speed. And it's going to be great if the Cowboys across the board can really get pressure equally. That, my friends, is what's going to make this team this year. I'm so happy that the Cowboys, for once, are actually caring about the defensive line. And... Um, caring about what happens as far as pass rush because the thing about pass rush is this I look back and I say and I pose this question to my guys and stuff would you take the Dallas Cowboys secondary or would you take the Giants when they were winning Super Bowls the secondary and to a man everybody's like I'll take our secondary well that defense was great it wasn't because of their secondary it was because of their defensive front that put pressure on the quarterback. And that, my friends, is what the Cowboys are looking to do right now. All right. My buddy Allen should be back here soon with the uh, 45 so we can get this thing connected and start pulling some of this wire. Whew. Places I pulled wire, man. I pulled wire at the Air and Space Museum. I pulled wire at the National Art Gallery. I pulled wire all over the damn place. And I'm going to tell you. Pulling that thick ass wire through that two inch conduit, that ain't no fun. Especially on a Saturday, your day off. All right, peace.